Have you ever woken up in the morning with an annoying question in your head about how does this thing work? You type in your question on Google search and then you are like, how does Google search work? Then you take a look at your smartphone that you have been using all this while and you think, why is my phone so cheap? We know you have these questions and honestly so do we and that's exactly why we are coming up with this new series that talks about the smaller things in tech but have a much bigger impact in real life. My name is Shubham Raheja, you're watching Gadgets 360 and this is Elemental. Catch us every Sunday and if you're particularly excited just like me, consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon so that you know exactly when we put out our latest videos. Now let's rewind a bit and revisit that question. Why is my phone so cheap? If you're among millions of Indians using an affordable smartphone, no judgment there by the way, this question might have hit you particularly hard, especially looking at the recent launches. Now, while we as Indians are always on a lookout for value for money, the ongoing pandemic has only made us more cautious about how we spend our money on smartphones. To find out, we talked to Shobit Srivastav, a researcher at Counterpoint India. Uh, when this pandemic hit, a lot of people uh, got into the economic crisis and a lot of people were uh, impacted financially. Again, so this price segment, this 15,000 to 20,000 or 10,000 to 20,000 price segment became important because people who actually wanted a new phone, they might go again in the same price segment or upgrade in the, uh, and they would want, you know, uh, good specifications affordable pricing and that is what you get in this uh, a good package in this price segment. Now there are several things that go into making your smartphones cheap and worth buying. I want you to put yourself in the shoes of a product manager of one of these companies. If you have a budget cap of let's say 15,000 rupees, you will have to figure out which components provide the highest value to your customer and prioritize accordingly. Now the things that you have to choose from include the choice of materials including glass, metal or plastic that the cool kids call polycarbonate. You have the display system on a chip or SOC, RAM, internal storage, battery, camera, the OS and the UI, aesthetics and button placement and then you got to make decisions like whether or not you want to include that headphone jack and how much do you want to spend on marketing. I think uh, you should start uh, with uh, the chipset. So you can start with maybe a smart, uh, maybe a, a, a Qualcomm 700 chipset or a MediaTek uh, Helios P60 uh, or G90. Now it is important to know that some technologies that were extremely expensive two years ago have become more affordable these days because of economies of scale. This basically means that the more you produce something, the cheaper it gets. That's why affordable smartphones of this year have specs that look better than the flagships of let's say 2017. Now in order to get a better feel for this, we are going to play a game. So this is a really old game called Smartphone Tycoon. So you can find it in the link in the description below. Disclaimer, it's full of ads and bugs and it's got like terrible reviews and everything is going to look as if it's straight out of 2017. But I'm sure you'll, it'll get the point across. So in this game, we are starting off as a budget smartphone company. Now, if you look at my budget on the top left corner, yeah, that's a billion dollars. That's because I am in the sandbox mode. Now, since this game was made in 2018, certain components cost a lot more than you would expect. So I'm going to assume that this $500 phone is a phone that costs around 15,000 rupees today. Now, I want to build a phone with a good display and okay camera. And as like Shobit said, a really good processor and an okay battery life. Now, this isn't an ideal phone, but you get an idea. First, let's add screen X, which basically gives you an edge to edge display. That's $25. I don't want a physical button, but it costs quite a bit to get rid of it in this game. So I'm just going to stick with it. Now, I know I've already picked screen X, but let's look at the other things in a display. We have quite a few options here. A TFT 720p display is getting my total cost to $270. How about an AMOLED 720p 298? Okay, I'm gonna go with an IPS 1080p display for better value. 
Now I want my phone to perform like a boss. So let's go to processors. Totally real names here. Crap, I'm almost out of money if I think about it. Okay, I'm gonna go with Medio Rec MT 6486 with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. Where we add 462. Time for cameras. Okay, so when this game was made, they didn't have 64 MP shooters, so I'm gonna go with a 16 megapixel primary. I want another one, uh, exceeding the budget. Okay, 12 megapixel primary, and I like this style. We are at $477, battery is 2000 milliamp hours. I know, I know, that's the highest I could go, but yeah, it's kind of low. Speakers and headphone jack, yes sir. Now we are at 484. Let's do some finishing touches now. A low here and those markings makes it $501 or 15,000 rupees. Not bad, huh? So what have we learned? You remember we focused on a few things in the start? I want to build a phone with a good display and okay camera and as like Shobit said, a really good processor and an okay battery life. Yeah, we just built a smartphone keeping that in mind. Now, if you want to focus on something else in the smartphone, we'll have to compromise on some other components. Having said that, in the real world, once a company is happy with the mix and match of parts and components, it goes for testing and quality assessment. Companies spend days and even months to simply make sure that your phone that you receive is durable enough and doesn't fail under normal circumstances. Now this is the time when some leaks start surfacing in the news because this information is mostly public. If a smartphone receives FCC or Federal Communications Commission approval, it basically means its radios and antennas are all okay to be used and it conforms to certain wireless emission standards. Similarly, if you have the CE or Conformity European marking, which basically ensures safety standards so that your smartphone or its adapter won't catch fire when you use it, you also have TENA, the Chinese counterpart of FCC and BIS or Bureau of Indian Standards, which ensures your phone is safe, operates under certain frequencies, and interestingly, whether or not it supports Indian languages. Now this is just one side of the story. We also have some marketing budgets that also add up to the price of the phone. After that, we sell the phone on a margin. Good marketing turns really boring industrial jargon into buzzwords. For instance, if this commercial awesome screen, awesome camera, long lasting battery life was like this. Its primary camera has a Samsung ISOCELL S5K GM2 image sensor with a quad bear module sitting behind an f2.0 lens. I mean, you get the point, right? Now let's get back to the game. Good marketing will make our phones sell better, but cut down on our specs. A higher margin would mean I could sell less phones and make decent money, but a lower margin would mean I would have to sell more phones to get a decent profit. The latter is what smartphone companies that make budget phones mainly focus on. So once I start selling the device, I'll get some fans and I'll see how much profit I've made with the smartphone. And there you go. Now the cool thing is the more good phones you make, the better trust you get from your customers, which means you always have some sort of buzz around your smartphones. This also means that you don't have to spend so much on marketing every single time you come up with a new phone. Now, it is very important to know that you need to get your first impressions right, be it of your company, of your brand, or of your product, because that paves the way for your future products. That's exactly what Realme did with Realme One, and you can see where the company is right now. Now, most of the costs that we have seen so far are visible in some way, but there are also some behind the scenes costs as well. Companies have to pay their workers, they have to pay for distribution and also for raw materials and resources. There are also import duties applicable and that can kind of hurt a company's business since it reflects massively in the final price tag of a phone. To get around this, they build their own manufacturing units. Now there are several things that I oversimplified over here mainly because we didn't have enough time. But I really hope I spiked your interest into this topic. Because remember, the more you know, the better.
Thanks for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, smash that like button. And to read more on tech, log on to gadgets360.com. I'll see you next Sunday on this series called Elemental.